morning everyone, happy Tuesday. This is Rachel, education specialist here at the Topeka Zoo, and we are live with our 10 a.m. virtual education program. Before we get started, as always, we wanna to thank Topeka Collegiate and the Kokari Foundation for sponsoring these programs. Now today, we are going to be talking about first grade curriculum relating to how young plants and animals are like but not exactly like their parents. So we have some animals to chat about here, and then we have some live animals that I know you will love to talk about as well. So getting started, let's first talk about plants. Plants, like this sunflower in the picture, this is an example of a plant that does not look like its parent as soon as it is blossoming. So many flowers come from seeds, and as they grow, they actually have to grow their body parts. They grow their stem, and then their leaves, and over time they start to grow the beautiful petals that make up the sunflower. So this is an example of a plant who over time might look like the mom and dad plant. However, this is not something that is automatically uh, growing out of the seed into the full grown plant. And it might look a little bit different than the plants uh, who produced it because it might be a little bit taller or a different color in terms of shades of yellow. But young plants, they have to grow and eventually they have all of the same parts as their parent plants. It just takes them time to get there. Now many other types of animals um, and plants have to grow their body parts as soon as they are born as well. For instance, frogs, they go through a life cycle change. So they lay their eggs, and then once they hatch out, they become a tadpole with no body parts, no arms and legs, and then it grows their legs, grows their arms, and becomes an adult frog. So when they're first born, frogs don't look anything like their parents, but over time they grow their body parts and look like mom and dad frog. Another example of an animal who grows their body parts is butterflies. Butterflies, just like our frogs, they go through a life cycle. They actually have different stages where they look completely different in every stage. First they are an egg, then they hatch out of their egg into a caterpillar. Then they form this beautiful chrysalis. And then they become an adult butterfly. So going through these stages, it can actually take them about a month to go from being an egg to a caterpillar, a chrysalis, and an adult butterfly. So by the time they get to an adult, they do look similar to their parents in that they're beautiful and orange, they've got the black and white the other body parts, the spots on them, but it takes them a while to get from the egg to the adult. Now, as humans, we are an animal that when we are born, we do not have to grow our body parts. We are born with all of the parts we need. Now, when we're babies, we are smaller. We might not have much hair. We might look pink, but we are born with our fingers, our toes, our arms, our legs, our head, as are many other animals in the animal kingdom. So I want to shift to talking about animals who, when they're born, they have all of their parts, but they just have to grow up and look like their parents. And they do this in a variety of different ways. If you see, this is a picture of a mama dog, and she has lots of puppies with her. Now those puppies look like their mom when they're first born because they have all their body parts, just like humans. They are born with their head and their legs, their paws, their little tails. But as you can see, all of these puppies are different than mama dog because they are smaller. Many of them are different colors. You can see mom's kind of a mixed tan and black color, whereas these puppies are mostly either brown or black. So they are similar to the mom in that they have all of their body parts, but their coloring is different. So just like other types of animals, dogs are similar to their parents in the terms of having all of their body parts, but their coloring and their size might be different. 
Here's another example. These are animals called tapirs, and they live down in Central and South America, as well as over in Asia. There are a few different species. Now, tapirs usually have one baby at a time, and as you can see, here's a mama tapir with her baby, and the baby looks a lot different than the mom. Although it does have all of its body parts, it is smaller and it is kind of striped and spotted. That is so the baby can camouflage or blend in to the ground and the grasses down in Brazil where it lives. Now, after about five or six months, that baby loses its stripes and spots and becomes the solid color that mom is. But it takes it several months to look like its mom. So this is an example of an animal who is like its mom, but it's also different when it is born in terms of its color. Now, another example of a mammal whose babies are a different color is this type of monkey. This is the silver-leafed monkey, and if you notice, the baby looks a lot different than its mama. The mama is this beautiful silver color, whereas the baby is bright orange. Now, this is not a camouflage, a blending in coloring. This is actually to signal to let all of the other female monkeys, the other girl monkeys, know that this baby was born, so that they might come and help this mom take care of it. Talk about a cool adaptation! Now, this baby stays orange for about three months before it turns the same color as mom. So, different colors can mean differing things among young animals. Now, here's another example of the babies looking different than mom. This is a reptile. It is called a midland water snake, and these guys live in the southeastern United States, like Florida and Georgia. And as you can see, mom is this big orange color. Well, in many reptiles, babies can sometimes be lots of different colors, and reptiles like snakes, lizards, turtles, alligators. They oftentimes have a lot of babies to make sure that their numbers stay up. Now, this mama is orange, but she gives birth, live birth, to 12 to 30 babies at a time. And as you can see, all of those little slithering snakes around her are her babies, and they're all a bunch of different colors. Just like the puppies that we talked about in an earlier example, reptiles like snakes. They have lots of babies that are different colors as well. So if you see, those babies are kind of brown. They're black. They're all sorts of different colors, and they will not change their color like the tapir or the silverleaf monkey did earlier. Those babies will stay the color that they were born. So by being a different color, it does allow them still to camouflage, but they are slightly different than their mom. So coloring is one of the biggest similarities and differences in the animal kingdom between parents and their babies. Now let's talk about a bird example. This here is a bald eagle. I'm sure you guys all recognize this beautiful, majestic bird. Well, they lay two eggs at a time usually, and when those babies hatch out, they are called eaglets. And those eaglets, those babies, look a lot different than mom. When they are born, they do have all their body parts. However, they are small, and they don't have all of their feathers. They have their beak and their wings and their feet, but they do have to grow their feathers over time. Now, interestingly, bald eagles are known for their beautiful white feathers on their head, but those don't come until they are about five years old. Until they are five, those feathers, once they grow them in, the big flight feathers that they use to soar the skies, they are brown. And once they hit about five years of age, that is when the head feathers turn white, and that signals the other bald eagles that they are ready and able to have babies. But bald eagles, their coloring changes、um, first when they're born to when they become an adult, but then it changes from all brown to white. Five years old. Talk about a really interesting difference between the babies and the adults.
Now here is a super cute example for you. This is an echidna. And this is an animal that lives over in Australia. They have quills on their body, kind of like a porcupine. And echidnas, this is the mom right here. Now, baby echidnas, which are called puggles, they only have one baby at a time. And those babies are born without their quills. They live inside mom's pouch for the first 50 days of their life. And then at about 50 days old, that is when they start to grow their quills. And then they're out of mom's pouch and she teaches them how to survive for another six months or so and then they're on their own. So baby echidnas, which is this cute mammal that lives over in Australia, they don't get their quills for protection until they are 50 days old. So they are another example of an animal who's similar to mom in that they're the same color, they're born with most of their body parts, but they don't get all of their quills until a couple months old. Alrighty, we have one final example, and boy is this one neat. Giant pandas. Giant pandas, like the one right here, are gigantic. They can get a couple hundred pounds. And they have one to two babies at a time. But when those babies are born, they are tiny, they are pink, they don't have much hair, and they are blind. In fact, they are one nine hundredth the size of mom. They are less than a pound. They are itty bitty. And they don't even have any black coloring on them yet. They don't get their black coloring until they are about a month old. And they stay with mom for over a year. So when those babies are first born, they look a lot different from mom in their size and their color, but as they grow, they start to look very similar to mom and dad. So, if you are in first grade, linked in the comments here, I have a matching game for you. This is an example of all animals um, that we have talked about today, and it has a picture of the mama animal and the baby. What I want you guys to do is cut these out and paste them um, together to this page. So there are eight different examples of a mom and a baby. So you cut out each one of these pages and you paste it. So you might have a mama panda here and the baby panda or a mama echidna and the baby echidna. So I want you guys to match up the mama animal to their baby. As always, take a picture and put it in the comments because today we're learning all about how young animals are similar to their mom and dad, but also how they are different. They are not exactly alike. And the live animal that we are going, getting ready to meet is a family that we had at the zoo, have at the zoo. Um, this mom had four cubs. Um, couple years ago, uh, close to about a year and a half ago, and those cubs are similar to mom and dad, but they are also different. So I am going to introduce you all to Anne Marie. She is the keeper of our Sumatran tigers. And Anne Marie, can you talk to us a little bit about our cubs and how you tell them apart and how they're like and um, dislike to mom and dad? Yes, um, I'm going to take my mask off now that you've stepped away. <laughs> Hi there. Um, I'm Anne-Marie here at the Tikapiko Zoo. These are our Sumatran tigers. We have the four cubs, as Rachel mentioned. Um, we tell them apart by looking at their stripes. So, as you can see, they've got those black stripes on their bodies. Um, and just like our fingerprints, the stripes on a tiger are unique to each individual. So, on their foreheads, we're able to see patterns, and then we recognize those patterns to each individual cub. Right in front of us over here with the light blue ball, that is Raja. If he does turn back towards us, we can see that he has a small triangle in the middle of his head, outlined by a larger thick triangle. Um, then we also have Badar who has a playing card spade. So if you see those black playing cards that look like an upside down heart, that's called a spade. 
And that's how we recognize Badar. Zayana has a perfect check mark above her right eye. And she is the one that's sort of walking to us right now. So if you look above, it's our left, her right eye. Um, you'll see that check mark. And then laying up on top of the rocks over there, that is Bintang. And he looks the most like Zayana's pattern, but he's actually got a heart shape above his left eye, which while we're looking at him is on his right side. Right, and so tigers, when they're born, they are born with these stripes, right? Yes, that's correct. So when these guys, they are first born, they look like smaller virgin versions of their parents. So they just need to grow. Um, so they have their tail, they have their whiskers, they have their ears, they have their arms and legs, just like we do, and just like dogs and cats do. Um, and I mean, these are a type of feline, so it makes sense. Um, so as they grow up, um, they just start to look more and more like mom or dad, um, and the stripes are on them. Actually, something that's really interesting about their stripes is that if we were to shave off all the fur from their body, that stripe pattern is also on their skin. Right, and so those stripes are one of the things that makes them different from each other. Now, are their personalities different as well, Anne-Marie? Absolutely. Um, Zayana, who is the only female cub in this specific litter, she would be our adventurer. Um, she's kind of the first one who likes to explore things. She's constantly jumping and climbing. Um, and in our second yard that we have, we actually have a tree structure. And she's the only one of all of the ca uh, cats, including mom and dad, that climb all the way to the top of the tree. So I'd say she's our bold and daring cat. Um, Bintang, who is not the one playing, well, now he's playing with the blue ball. He is a really gentle mama's boy kind of cub. He loves mom. He is constantly chuffing at her and dad and all of his other cub siblings. Um, and he just kind of likes to, you know, just hang out with everyone. Raja is our big boy. He weighs the most out of all of the cubs and he, you know, he just kind of likes to take charge. And Badar, our final cub, he, he's different depending on the situation. Um, if there were only one ball today, you would see him guarding that single ball and saying, this is mine and no one else can have it. But since we have enough balls for each of the cubs, um, he's kind of just chilling right now. Excellent. And what are mom and dad like? How can you tell the difference between them and then what are their personalities like? So um, these are, so again, these are Sumatran tigers. They're actually the smallest of all the tiger species. Um, with that being said, males are larger than the females. So visually right away, without even looking at the stripes, you can tell which one is mom and which one is dad. Um, Sanjeev is very laid back. He's very calm. Um, when we feed Sanjeev using uh, what's called a meat stick, we put a piece of meat on the end of a rod and we can put that into the enclosure with the tiger so that they can take that meat off and we are staying safe. Um, Sanjeev just very gently will take the tip of his teeth and take it off. Um, and you wouldn't picture that coming from a tiger. Uh, Ginger, on the other hand, if it is something that she really enjoys, um, like a bone, she will go for it right away, she will defend it, she will roar at her cubs and say, no, this is mom's bone, no one else can come. And that actually makes a lot of sense. Um, tigers are solitary in the wild. Uh, they come together for mating purposes. And then at about two to two and a half years after cubs are 
um, full grown and prepared to go out on their own, that's when they'll leave mom. So they're still in that same age range. They are about one and a half. Um, at about 18 months is when they become independent but are still with mom. Um, so if they're getting there, they'll turn two in October. And can you talk a little bit about why the Topeka Zoo breeds Sumatran tigers? Why is that necessary? So unfortunately, um, tigers are incredibly endangered out in the wild. Um, and so we participate in the species survival plan uh, through the AZA, American Zoological Association. And we make sure that the tiger species will have the best genetics to further their species into the future. Um, and ideally, when the space for um, these tigers to live in their natural wild habitat, we will have a still healthy um, population of these tigers that could go back and return to the wild. Right, and Eli wants to know, is the tiger's skin striped as well as their fur? Yes, their skin underneath is striped in the same exact pattern that their fur is striped in. So, kind of like if we were to um, take a razor and shave them, they, you would see that same exact pattern. They just wouldn't be furry anymore. Right, so they are born with those stripes, Eli. Um, do you happen to know what day they were born? October 15th, um, we are... 2018? 2018. Right. And what will happen to them as soon as they outgrow this enclosure? Um, so, as I stated before, they're part of the species survival plan. Um, the AZA, the um, American Zoological Association, um, they keep track of both internationally and um, they, there's a few different programs that are involved, but they keep track of all of the genetics of all of each individual species. So these, their species, Sumatran tiger, and they can figure out what tigers would go well together in order to keep that population healthy and going into the future. Um, so they will look at our cubs that we have here and they will decide uh, where that they should go live next and what tiger that they should meet and potentially have a new family with. And some of the viewers are asking, do we know when any of them are leaving and where? Not at this time. Um, that is something that they meet about, I believe it's once a year, and then they kind of decide based on that. Um, you know, another factor this year is everything that's been going on with uh, the COVID virus. Um, we want to make sure that anything we're doing in terms of the animal population is healthy and safe. So until we're entirely sure that um, a journey for any of these animals would be safe for both the animal and the humans, um, that would probably be put on hold anyway. Sure, um, and Liliana is asking, where is mama and daddy tiger? <laughs> So mom and dad are actually currently um, spending some time both inside together. Um, we do have two outdoor habitats. Uh, one is currently being worked on. Um, and so while the enclosure is being worked on, we cannot have a tiger outside in it. Um, they are both inside, but they are not in the same stalls. They are currently mesh to mesh, and when I left the building, they were chuffing at each other. Oh, that's cute. Hmm. So you mentioned their balls. Can you talk a little bit about some of the other enrichment items besides those balls, which looks like are some of their favorites? Yes, they do. So toys. Toys is a huge hit with the cubs especially. Um, and you know, their dad, the, he loves when you hang a ball um, from a pulley so he can play with the ball in the air. But there's other stuff like scent enrichment. Um, these guys have a really great sense of smell. Um, and so we'll put out different spices. We might take uh, a log or a toy that another animal had and put it in with them. And they'll take in that smell. It's something that um, it looks like they're making an you type face that we might make, um, but it's just them taking in that scent and it's called Fleming. Um, we also give them sound. Sometimes we'll play music. I've 
um, hung some wind chimes for them. You know, sometimes they care about it, sometimes they don't. Um, I've played other animal noises for them, and I often see them watching both the elephants that are across the way, and sometimes also the hippo that's across the way. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Um, Lily Alana wants to know what's their favorite food? Ooh, I'd say probably bones. We love bones. Um, on bone day, they each try and get their own bone and they take it to their own individual space and they protect it. If anyone comes near, they'll let out a very big roar to let them know that, hey, this is mine. So they'll just growl and say, no, 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 my bone. Huh. Um, and can they swim well? Yeah, actually, that's something about these cats that not all cats will do. Um, these guys are actually excellent swimmers. They will live close to water sources, um, and their feet are actually partially webbed to make them better swimmers. Um, and how long can they live and how big do they get? Uh, typically, they'll live about 10 years in the wild. Um, that would be roughly their max age. And then under human care, it would be almost double that. They can live, you know, up to 20. Um, of course, that number will always vary based on the individual, but it's just, you know, with all animals under human care, they get the best food, best um, best care for, you know, veterinary health and, and other stuff as well. Um, these guys are not quite full grown. They still have some growing to do, but the boys are almost about the same size as Jinja. Um, they're weighing in the lower 200s, like two, 220 is... Um, I believe what Raja is right now, and it might be a little bit more than that, and he's the biggest. Zayana is just under 200 pounds at this point, um, which is a healthy weight for her being the female. Um, and Sanjeev weighs roughly like maybe 300, a little over 300 pounds. Um, so he's at a good healthy weight, and again, these are the smaller of the tigers, so you can imagine other tiger species be much larger than this. Right, and where do they live in the wild? Um, so Sumatra, it's um, part of Indonesia, um, an island in Asia. Excellent. And they live in the forest there. Why do oh, they have the, uh, the striped skin and the striped fur? So I know this sounds kind of funny because um, you think of jungles and you think all this green. Um, but those stripes there, it kind of breaks up their uh, the color. So when a predator or a prey um, is looking at a tiger, they have a tough time telling where the tiger starts, where it ends, um, and it helps them blend into the shadows. These guys are typically gonna be hunting at night, um, and so of like the night shadows, they'll just blend into their habitat, um, and so it makes them harder to see. Do they ever share the same exhibit with mom or dad? Yeah, the cubs are often with mom. Um, for right now, so mom will join them actually a little bit later today. Um, just for the purposes now and having Sanjeev have a little company. Um, and you know what mom doesn't want a small break. So <laughs> she is inside currently. Um, the only time that our female Jinja would be with Sanjeev is if we are intending um, for them to breed and then they can choose whether or not they would like to. Um, but the cubs do not go in with dad, mainly because in the wild um, that usually would not happen. Um, not to say it hasn't happened, there have been sightings of cubs and, and dads in a little family unit for a really temporary amount of time. But typically they are solitary um, and so it wouldn't really be the case that they would interact with dad at all. Um, and do the cubs fight sometimes? Yeah, you know, they'll have little spats. If you think of, uh, you might have a brother or a sister at home, they fight like siblings. They might, um, you know, fight over a good bone or a toy or something that they really want. But typically these guys are just more interested in playing with each other. Um, and Maggie wants to know, do the tigers have any predators? Um, so these guys do have to watch out for anything larger in their area. Um, but I'd say the biggest thing they have to worry about is humans. Um, it's super unfortunate, but that's the case with a lot of animals in the wild. Um, people will try and um, kill them for trophy purposes, which is really sad. We have no need for anything that a tiger has. Um, and so, whereas the tiger, they do need their own fur and should be able to keep it. 
Um, we also will sometimes build our homes where these guys are living and then um, their habitat area where they can live gets smaller and smaller and then they actually might fight with each other over territory as well. So one of the things that you guys um, can do from home to help protect we go to Blind Tiger Restaurant here in Topeka and if you are an adult you can purchase the Tiger by IPA which is a type of beer and uh, Blind Tiger will actually donate a portion of that money to the Topeka Zoo's Conservation Fund and we fully fund a ranger named Bader over in Sumatra who is who we named one of our cubs after who was on the ground in their wild homes helping to protect them so that's one of our main conservation initiatives we're very proud of it and we love the partnership and the generosity from Blind Tiger Brewery. So make sure to go and support them to support us. Um, does Sanjeev verbally interact with the Cubs or vice versa? Yes, he absolutely does. Um, we often will hear Sanjeev um, truffing, not just at Jinja, but with the Cubs. And the Cubs will truff right back at him. Uh, something that I thought uh, is kind of a cute little story. Um, so to make sure all of our animals are healthy, um, just like you or I would go to the doctor, these guys see a vet on a pretty regular basis just to make sure they're still healthy. So with these guys, since they are dangerous, we have to put them to sleep for um, a period of time while we check all of their blood work, we make sure that they're the healthy weight, and that their teeth are all good. So during this time when um, they wake up, we put them back in their habitat and we keep an eye on them to make sure that they're healthy when they wake up as well. And the cubs and mom all got together and they were watching Sanjeev the entire time he was waking up, chuffing at him the whole time. Uh, they were also curious to make sure like what was going on with dad and um, the chuffing is a friendly greeting and so they were just kind of keeping their eye on dad as well. Um, and somebody asked, would these cubs ever go into the wild? Um, that is not something that would likely happen. Um, you know, there are different programs um, through different species survival plans um, that you would be able to put um, an animal back into the wild. Uh, and that is something usually that they would go from the facility they're born at to kind of a a training camp that teaches them how to survive in the wild and then once they are at a point where uh, we're confident that they would be able to live on their own then they would be released into the wild. Um, unfortunately with everything that's going on in Indonesia right now there is some you know turmoil and the wild's not the best wild at this point. Um, these guys would not likely be released into the wild, but I can ensure you that we are giving them everything they need to live a fulfilled and healthy life, both physically and uh, mentally. Unfortunately, the wild is just not safe. There are actually less than 400 Sumatran tigers left in the wild, and there used to be thousands, and that is because of humans. So um, that's one of the reasons we have them in zoos, to study them and to keep them safe and to keep their populations up. Well, that looks like it is the end of all of our questions today. Um, we'll give time for any final questions to come in. But in that time, I want to thank you, Anne-Marie, for teaching us all about our beautiful tiger family. Thank you guys for learning at home about animal babies and how they're similar and different from their parents. As always, take a picture of your matching game, put it in the comments, and we will be back tomorrow for a class on deserts for second grade curriculum. Did we have any final questions, Megan? Okay, thank you guys so much. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, bye.